Five banks, nearly $6 billion in fines, a handful of guilty pleas, and something the Attorney General of the United States calls, quote, a breathtaking conspiracy. Some of the world's biggest financial institutions, including J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Barclays, the Royal Bank of Scotland, and UBS, will pay billions for manipulating the currency and interest rate markets, one of the least, the currency market, one of the least regulated markets in the financial world, and one of the largest. There, about $5 trillion changes hands every day. The traders from different banks didn't act as rivals in the foreign exchange market, but rather they worked together to rig the price of U.S. dollars and euros in a scheme that went on nearly every day for five years through 2012. Eamon Jabbers has more. Deep inside the posh offices of the world's major banks, the language in the private digital messages of foreign exchange traders was right out of a mafia movie. There was this message from one trader to another being invited to join the scam, mess this up and sleep with one eye open tonight. And this message to a trader in training, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And then this, an admission of what the conspirators were really trying to do. Yes, the less competition, the better. Today, though, that language caught up with those traders as new U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch announced the massive $5.6 billion settlement. Currency traders at several multinational banks formed a group that they dubbed the cartel. It's perhaps fitting that they chose that name as it aptly describes the brazenly illegal behavior that they were engaged in on a near five-year basis. Almost every day for more than five years, traders in this cartel used a private electronic chat room to manipulate the spot market's exchange rate between euros and dollars using coded language to conceal their collusion. On Wall Street, though, reaction to the settlements was muted. UBS, Barclays, and Royal Bank of Scotland shares were all up, and Citigroup and J.P. Morgan were slightly negative in the early part of the trading day. And for their part, the banks seemed poised to shrug off the settlements, with analysts saying some of the penalties were lighter than expected. For example, in its press release today, J.P. Morgan said the company is able to continue to serve its clients and does not anticipate future material constraints on its business activities. No individual traders were charged today, although Attorney General Loretta Lynch said that the investigation remains open and ongoing. The big mystery here, though, is just how profitable this scam was for the big banks. The Department of Justice says it hasn't calculated how much money the banks made from the underlying scam. So that makes it difficult to assess just how serious these penalties and fines were that were handed down today. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Eamon Javers in Washington.